so so am i audible to all yes sir okay all right okay yeah so first of all uh, thanks a lot uh, for inviting me to i am here only nearby or from people like that okay so i am dr das here so uh, currently working as a professor at diplac hyderabad and if you know that in diplac hyderabad we don't have usual centers okay uh, usual departments we are having research centers okay so that's why obviously i am one of the uh, affiliated to center something known as the center for security theory and algorithm research so about me so already uh, talk about that so i did my uh, masters and phd from kharagpur and uh, uh, phd in csc and my research interest uh, mainly span on uh, cryptography systems and network security and uh, recently that our team as well as uh, research collaborators around the globe we are working on several emerging technology areas like blockchains uh, we are also working recently on ai and security as well as something known as the post quantum cryptography so which is one of the very very emerging topic nowadays so if the quantum computers comes in the place so how to make our system to be more secure so with the help of something known as the post quantum cryptography techniques okay so i have some statistics here so research highlights so around so 382 uh, papers of this uh, mostly in the journal forums around uh, 324 and uh, i mainly focus on the journal publications rather than conferences and uh, number of IT transactions or IT venues uh, around uh, 340. So I have something known as the uh, citation index of Google citations around uh, 19k, 19,000 uh, with the impressive H index, uh, which is H index is one of the very, very toughest uh, individual uh, where your at least H uh, publication will have any uh, citations. And this parameter goes very, very slowly as compared to your IT index. So IT index is nothing but your how many publications will have at least in citations. Okay. So that's why the IT index goes faster as compared to your uh, H index. So our team, uh, as well as uh, uh, we have actually good research team at like Hyderabad. So we are able to publish some of the very, very top level uh, forums. For example, IT transactions on information financial security, uh, which is regarded as the world number one uh, security journals. Okay. And then also we are having some of the other uh, venues, for example, IT transactions on uh, dependable secret computing, uh, which is known as the ITP TDSC, uh, which is one of the very, very flagship uh, transactions of data from IT. So apart from that, uh, we are also uh, very good publications, for example, in the ITP Smart Gate, ITP uh, transactions on industrial informatics, regular technologies, etc. Also, that I am asso associated with some of the actual board members. Uh, for example, I was associate editor for ITP system journals around two years, and also I was for three years uh, in the JCA Journal of Networks and Computer Applications for the same year, uh, Computer Communications and so on so on. Also that I had opportunity to have some of the best uh, editorial lectures uh, from Computational Ethical Engineering from Elsevier, ITV, ICT Express from Elsevier, and wireless communications, mobile computing from WD as well as uh, India. And there are some of the achievements or some of the honors. Uh, so very, very recently in uh, November 15th, uh, 2023, I, I have been listed in the uh, Web of Science Clarivity, uh, I'm cited researcher. And uh, uh, from India, that uh, only there are 20 names of years. Uh, so fortunately, my name is there, I'm the name. <laughs> Also that I was also in that uh, list uh, in 2020, as well as uh, uh, you can have uh, my one of the media article, for example, uh, China, we have in blockchain, India needs to be catch up. So that article was in the blockchain technologies, how the blockchain is needed very much for security data in India, particularly for India. And uh, that has been published in the Times of India. 
uh, newspaper on the 6th May 2021. So these are the some statistics, so uh, you can have my more details uh, which I maintain in my Google site, science.google.com, UI, uh, KGP, Ekadas, so you can have all the information about me. Okay. So apart from that, we have also very uh, good research collaborations uh, uh, throughout the globe. For example, we have uh, Professor Sajal Kedas, ITB fellow from US University. Uh, we have Professor Morpanter, uh, which now editor-in-chief for ITB Transitions and Information Policy Security TIFS, some uh, from Italy. Uh, Professor Vidhi Sushila is there from Australia. Uh, Professor Sarelli uh, Remotsu, they are from uh, US. And Professor Kuramkar is there from uh, KSU King South University, uh, Saudi. And uh, also Professor Jual is there, so we are uh, good friend for a long time, so I to people you know, from Bajin, etc. Okay. okay, so before going to this blockchain technology and other things, so uh, let me introduce very briefly. So assuming that you know about the cryptographic basic of things. So still I am going for very very basics of uh, cryptography very very uh, briefly. And uh, if you have any courses, anything, so please stop in between my talk. Okay. Right. So you know about the cryptography, okay? why do we need security? Okay. So for instance, so in cryptography that we usually talk about Alice and Bob. So there are two users. User A is there. And user A wants to uh, talk sequently with the user B or Bob is there. Okay. But the main hurdle of this communication is that the communication is in insecure public channels. So therefore if you communicate over the public channel, anybody can intercept, anybody can modify your data, anybody can uh, delete your data, so anything it can be done. Okay. So instead of the public channels, so the next question is that, can we make the communications to be secured uh, between Alice and Bob? So that is the main uh, agenda here. So answer is yes. So, uh, thanks to cryptographic techniques, with the help of the cryptographic, we can make a secure communication uh, between Alice and Bob or between user E and B. So, next question is how does it work? Okay. Suppose that Alice is the user A, Alice has a plain text message same. Same plain text message could be say, for example, meet me after the New York party at some place, sometime. And this secret message wants to be conveyed to the Bob only. And so that the adversary or third party, which neither receiver nor the sender, should not be able to read the message as well as modify the message. For example, if the adversary is there, so Eve is there, Eve is able to read the message content of the Alice. So Eve can probably change the message content, say meet me after the New York party at some other place, some other time. So Bob can go there. So next question is come that instead of sending the plain text message, we have to do something so that even if the adversary intercept or reverse or read the content, the adversary should not be able to know what is the exact secret message hidden in this communication. So for that purpose, what we will do that, we will use something known as the secret information, or known as the traveler information, which is known as the key. So what is the key? Key is a very, very uh, small information. So here your message can be encoded or encrypted so that the transfer message, the transfer message will not be decoded by any adversary unless that you are having the matching key. So for example, we are having this uh, room and if this room is locked with the key, unless you have the key, you can't unlock this room. Room is secure. So just like that, so your message is encrypted with the help of a key known as the encryption key. And with the help of the encryption key, your message needs to be transferred to the something known as the plain text tool, something known as the cipher text message. So that is done by using something known as the encryption transformations or known as the encryption functions. So therefore, you are having a functions which will transform or convert your plain text message something known as the ciphertext message and then your ciphertext message you are transmitting to the, towards the Bob. Now after receiving the your ciphertext message by the Bob, so what Bob needs to do that Bob needs to 
decrypt or decode your message content. And decoding or decryption requires your matching decryption key. And if the recipient having the correct decryption key, then only can decrypt your message correctly otherwise. So in other words, what we are telling that if the adversary does not have your decryption key correctly, then it is not possible for the adversary to know your secret message, whereas Bob only can decrypt it because Bob has the correct decryption key. All right. So therefore in this case what we are having that we are having the encryption functions uppercase A from the Alice side whereas we are having exactly the reverse transformations known as the decryption transformations uppercase D and which require the correct decryption key lower case D. Okay. So in that case uh, what we are uh, talking about that your cipher test is being basically uh, transmitted over the public channel. But however, even the cipher test is reversed by the adversary, if adversary does not have your decryption key D, the your original message cannot be decrypted correctly. So that is the thing. And what that problem we want that here that process of encryption as well as decryption by the Alice and Bob should be schedule problem or very big easy problem, meaning that your encryption and decryption can be done in the polynomial time. Okay. So however, what do you want that for the adversary point of view, the breaking or getting the latest message from the cipher test message should be very very hard problem or it is known as the NP hard problem or in field problem. So for example say decryption of the your cipher test may require more than 10 years or 100 years time to decrypt your cipher test to recover the original latest message. Okay. So here we are having the from the adversary point of view, what we are talking about that it should be NP hard problem, but for sender and receiver point of view, it problem will be asking the problem. Okay. So then we are coming to the security of the scheme. So security of the scheme we are talking about that depends entirely on the security of the key. So we are not bothering about the security of your encryption and decryption functions. Why? For example, say one can argue that say for example encryption decryption functions will keep secret by the sender and receiver and it will work without using any key but the problem is that if somehow your say encryption function say is revealed to the adversary then you need to again redesign your encryption or decryption functions because those are revealed and uh, uh, note that this encryption decryption functions needs to be again implemented in decryption your software, hardware, all the cost requires, it will be too costly. So rather than what we are talking about that, if my encryption decryption functions are public, even adversary knows, I don't bother about that, and I am using only key. And somehow if my, if my key is leaked, then what I need to do, I need to only change my key. And nothing else, it will work. Because my encryption decryption functions are public, if I change my key, and it will work, because that is the new key, that with the new key again encryption decryption will take place and it will work. So therefore it is preferable to use in the cryptography your encryption decryption functions are made public but only the small secret information known as the key is kept to be secret. Okay. And obviously after this very strong assumptions it is not very easy to design your encryption and decryption functions. Because you need to keep your system to be more secure with the help of only chapter of small information. Okay. okay, so now if we come to the point of view of the attacker point of view, 
So we are telling that attacker purpose is to break the security of the systems. So they are therefore that we are having something on either that breaking the systems or we will tell that encryption scheme which is also known as a cipher or crypto systems is said to be breakable and if say third party means that adversary without any knowledge of encryption or decryption scheme and it, uh, adversary has the knowledge of encryption decryption functions there is no issue okay. can adversary systematically recover the plain text message from the cipher that is the question and if the attacker is able to do successfully within the polynomial time, we tell that the IO system is very good. Otherwise, right? So in this case, what we want that? We want to make our system to be secure by meaning that adversaries should not be able to break the security of the system in polynomial time. It should be anti hard for And one of the say, very, very uh, easiest attack, something like that, so what brute force attack is tells that suppose say if you are using say a 3 bit key so number of keys in the key space will be 2 for 3 8 keys will be there for example you have 0 0 0 0 0 1 0 1 1 and that last 1 1 1 so let, let us say rename those keys either k1 k2 up to k8 so what attacker will do that attacker will first decrypt with the first key k1 for your cipher test it will check whether this Cypher test is giving the plain test correctly or not. Otherwise, it will try for the second key and try for the third key and try for the last key. So, in that case, the worst case time complexity for this attack required by the attacker will be order of 2 power n, where n is the number of bits using the key. Right? And since we are Trying all possible combinations of the key in the key space, this attack is also known as the exhaustive search of the key space. Because we are exhaustively trying the all possible keys, first key, second key, third key, and so on, so on, up to last key. All possible keys we are trying to see whether a plain test can be recovered from the uh, transmitted or intercepted cipher. Now, this is a very, very uh, uh, important table. That table basically shows that how number of bits in the key depends on the security of the system. Okay. Now we are telling that if we use a, uh, a key of say 32 bits, so therefore the number of total number of keys in the key space will be 2 power 32. So around say 2 power 4 power 3 to 10 power 9 keys are there in this key space. What say for example the attacker has very powerful machines, not say quantum computer has got found in the market. Still that attacker say, I have say two types of machines here, one machine can decrypt, one decryption for microsecond. And even attacker can have the all-good machines which can decrypt 8 for 6 decryption for microsecond. Now if you use this kind of two settings, even for the first setting, so it requires only 35.8 minutes time only to know your latest message from your cyber response. And for the second message, it requires only 2.15 milliseconds. Now interestingly that what we are talking about that if you say uh, increase the number of bits in the key space then suddenly that number of key in the key space will be more and as a result the time required for your recovering the plain text from the cipher text is getting more and more difficult. So as a result this table tells that when you increase the number of bits in the key therefore the security of the system significantly increases. Right. So that is question is that can we increase the number of bits in the key very very large. And if you see that, if we say increase the number of bits in the key is to be large, certainly your security of the system increases, but what will happen? In that case your encryption and decryption process will be much slower. Because if you use the key bit size to be more, your encryption decryption pulses will be pretty will be slower. For example, in case of the internet of things environment, your IT devices are theirs, they are not so much uh, resource rich. Therefore, if you use such kind of keys in the 
for the IoT devices, it requires more time. And once it requires more time, it requires more energy to be spent by the IoT devices. And that will not be good for those devices. So as a result, so what we are talking about that here, there is a better trade-off between the number of bits used in the key versus security of the system. So based on the say, security, uh, say applications, for example, for military applications, so you can use the high-end uh, computing uh, resources, where you can use both for example, 160 bits, even a key bit size, that does not matter, because in that case, complexity can be uh, done with your okay. But in case of the IT devices, we probably uh, piece with this 128 bit case size, which will provide the zero okay. And based on the, the key used in the communications, we are calling that encryption is to be first is known as the symmetric encryption, known as the conventional encryption scheme. So in that case, what we are telling that your sender and receiver they can use the same key as encryption and decryption. Say for example, uh, next process will come that how to distribute this key by the communications, there is an PMAS algorithms, known as the decrypted key exchange algorithms, which will do the task. So by the communications that both sender and receiver they can share this symmetric secret key. Now this secret key can, will be used for encryption for the message X and the cipher test Y will be sent to the destinations and destinations will uh, decrypt the cipher test to give the same secret key to be of the original pen test process. Alright. And in between the communications we are having key term list or known as attacker. What is his task? Task is to intercept this cipher test process. And by intercepting the cybertext message Y, what adversary wants to decrypt this cybertext to know what is the pentagons or more precisely, what adversary is interested to know what is the key used in the communications. Because if the adversary knows what is the key used in the communications, then adversary can intercept all the communicating messages, then all the communicated ciphertext message can be decrypted using the same key. So that is another prime goal of the adversary, not only to know your printest message, but also to know what is the secret key used in your communications. Alright. Now in case of the public key based crypto systems. So in case of symmetric key based crypto systems, there is a trust among the sender and receiver because they are sharing the same thing. Now, in some applications, people are telling that, say, I don't trust you, and you don't trust me, but we want to do secure communications. So in that case, what I am telling that, okay, so I will generate my own pair of keys, known as the public key, private key pairs. I will keep my private key to be secret to me, and I will give my public key to her. So like that you say you generated your generates your own private public key pairs, you also provide the public key to me, your private keys. Okay, to me. So in a way, so let us take an example here, suppose there is a box. Box say gathers the public key of say for example Joy, Mike, Alex, and your state, and it forms the Bob public key. Okay. And this Bob wants to do secure communications with it another party known as the CIS. So what Bob will do? For the latest latest message X, Bob will take the CIS public key and using the Alice public key, the latest message will be encrypted to produce the cipher test message and now the cipher test message is sent to the Alice. Now Alice is the only fellow who can decrypt it because Alice has its own private key. And nobody can do it. Okay. So therefore, Alice will apply its own private key of the ciphertext message to recover the original printest message. That's it. So in that way, though I don't believe you, but it ensures that you are the only fellow who can decrypt it and nobody else in the network can decrypt it. Because you have its own private key. Alright. 
and we are having another scenario here that is known as the digital signatures. So what is the digital signatures? I have a document. I want to sign. It. So physically, say you sign it and you present to or send somebody else, and your document is verified because your signature. So just like that, if we can the, put the digital signature on a document, and anybody can verify your signature. And if the signature is valid, then the document is treated as a valid one. So in that case, what Bob is doing that Bob has a, a document X. What Bob is doing, Bob is encrypting this document with the help of its own private keys. And this takes y equal to uh, encryption from X using the private key of the Bob is known as a digital signature on the document. Now what Bob will do that Bob will send this document along with this digital signatures to the Alice and Alice can verify your signature with the help of all public information and no private information are required in order to verify the signature. So that is the one of the very very interesting property of the digital signature is that Digital signatures can be created only by the signers because signers had its own private key and anybody can verify, including the attacker also can verify your signature because it replaces all the public policies. So that is the one of the interesting thing. And your signature cannot be generated by any other fellow in the network because it replaces your own private key. Correct. So as it is done, you will see that there are main two applications of this. One is known as for authentication purpose, where we declare the digital signatures. Another for your encryption and decryption purpose. Now let us talk about uh, something, uh, in a brief something or another, cryptographic hash functions. And you know about the hash functions. So what hash function is that? It will take any arbitrary length input string and produce all the fixed length outputs. And because it is producing the fixed length output, so the characteristics of this function is that it is many to one function. Because there could be many inputs for which you can have the same output. Because all the inputs are compressing to the same size output. Okay. Or mathematically, what we are talking about that, a hash functions or it is called as the cryptography hash functions. It is one hash functions which will take any arbitrary length input string and produce a fixed length output string or as the hash value or message. Right. So in this case, what we are telling that so hash functions will take any arbitrary length input produces the fixed length output and one of the good properties that if I give you my message has to you y equal to h of x due to characteristics of the hash functions deriving my original input x from the hash output is very very difficult because it is many to one you can't determine that for which input the original input that your hash output has been produced. Okay. So that property is something known as the one way property of the hash functions. So second property is something known as the weak collision resistor property. What it is telling that if I give you a hint of say an input x or in other words if the adversary has an input x can adversary find another input y which is Foreign from the given input x, so that they will have a hash value. So that means that you know one input and you are trying to determine the another input for so that they will have the same position. And this problem is a very very hard problem. Okay. And finally that strong collision resistant uh, property tells that you don't have any clue or adversary does not have any clue can adversary derive the two inputs x and y so either they are distinct but they are as are same. and we 
want to design the hash functions which will exhibit all the properties weak as well as strong collision resistant properties. All the properties must be satisfied for a good cryptographic one in hash functions. And if we can design such kind of hash functions, we will call it as the collision resistant hash functions. Here are some of the examples of this. For example, we are having say MD5, uh, which is known as the message digest version 5 algorithm, uh, which was developed by the Ron Digest, who is the inventor of the one of the inventor of the RS algorithms in MIT USA. And property is that it takes any arbitrary length input, but produces only one twenty-eight bit as well. Then in IST, that is the National Institute of Standard and Technology USA, uh, they produced or developed a series of hash functions known as the SA family, secure hash algorithm family. The first that hash function is known as SA1, which will take the arbitrary length input and it produces 160 bit message digest. Right then they uh, propose that SA256 which takes any arbitrary length input but produces 256 message digest SAR uh, 384 by the name so it produces 384 message digest SAR 512 it produces 512 bit message digest and currently your blockchain technology using SAR 256 has algorithms which produces 256 has and you will be might be knowing that for your banking purpose, including your credit card, debit card, all transactions. But due to high security, they are using the SAR 512 as SAR algorithms here to achieve the very high level of security. So that is used by your uh, credit card, debit card, all ATM transactions. So they are using this. So another concern is there also that is known as the RIFE MB 160, which was developed by the uh, RIFE project. And it is uh, very very similar to SAW1 here, uh, which produces one security as our code. Now in general, uh, your hash functions only uh, takes the message and produces our code. But what will happen that if your hash functions also is given the key also along with the message. So that hash function is being called as the hash message authentication code or only the page map. So in a cryptography hash functions when you are supplying message along with the key that function name as the H map known as the hash message of the code. Right? Okay, so before going to that uh, applications other things, so let us start uh, look at uh, blockchain technologies uh, in play. So note that this blockchain technology is what we will discuss about here. So it is not at all new one. So it existed before 25 years ago. But suddenly that we are finding applications, that's why blockchain becomes a problem. Okay. And uh, blockchain is very, very similar to your linguist. Okay. So probably you have taught several times your students or student. So linguist, single linguist, double linguist, circular list, and etc. Et all these things. Okay. So in the linguist, what will happen that you are having notes. So nodes are having information and in the list, so what are the advantages there? You can modify, update any information inside the node. You can insert any uh, node at any place in the list. You can even delete or erase any block from the list. But once we are talking about the blockchain, what do you want that? Once a block has been inserted in a chain, known as the blockchain, that block will be temper system. That means that any information inside the block can, you can't modify or delete it, or even you can't delete any node in the list, or even you can't insert any block in arbitrary place in the list. So that is the major difference from the your linked list. And also another thing is that your Link list, they are connected to each other cryptographically. Okay. 
So by the definition, so you are having blockchain. Blockchain means that you are having blocks. Blocks contains essentially your digital information. Your digital information, for example, can be your data from IoT devices. Your data could be from say drones in the intelligent transport systems. It could be from data from the military systems, etc. And those data will form something known as transactions. A group of transactions will reside in a block. Then you form a block, and that block now needs to be added to a chain known as a blockchain. Right. And just like your link list, that our blockchain must start from certain or starting place. And thus, first created block in the blockchain has some special name, which is known as the genesis block. So genesis block is the block which is the first created block in the chain. And what we want that in the blockchain, the chain will be very long, and we will create the chain in such a way that the previous block has will be put in the block of the next block, and the previous block has to be the next block and so on. So that if an adversary try to say modify some information here, the body adversary needs to modify the previous block has or the future. Also, and which will become very very difficult task for the adversary when the chain becomes very long. Okay. Okay. So then we are telling that why blockchain and what are the reasons for the blockchain to be popular. So first is that it is not owned by any single entity; it is decentralized. Entity. So that means that the same block, same information you are putting in the distributed servers. See in the sense that even your server, if one server goes down due to some power failure or some malfunction, this, but there will be other servers which will take care of the service provided. So that is known as the decentralized nature. So that is one of the advantages. So second advantage is that data is cryptographically stored inside. For example, uh, if you are having say uh, healthcare applications, your all the patient informations are very private, confidential. Your all that patient related data can be encrypted and encrypted data can be put in the blocks. So your data is partly secure. Now question is that even my data is not secure because that we are having that uh, hash we have put here in the previous we have all these blocks. So therefore since the adversary cannot modify the previous hash as well as other hashes also, therefore even your data is not secure one, but the data modifications can be okay. So that means that if we put the public data here in the blocks, the data cannot be modified by any other person. Right. So that property is something more than the unique property. So that means that once the informations are put in the blocks, the blocks informations cannot be tempered, modified or deleted. So that is one of the properties. So another that uh, good property is that something known as the blockchain is transparent. So meaning that, for example, say uh, Alice and Bob is there. So if Alice say, wants to say uh, send some money, and usually in our system, so we uh, transfer the money higher. Right? So bank will take some commissions to transfer the money from Alice to Bob. Now that's why you are having the Bitcoin or cryptocurrency. So if I want to transfer some money directly to Bob, so I can directly send to the money to Bob without involving the bank. And due to that policy or government policy or other country policy, which one of the people are not so popular, because commission is not so But in that case, say Alice wants to send some uh, money to the Bob, and that uh, transactions, which will form a transactions, for example, from which source to which destination, say how much amount, what time stamp, for what purpose, the transactions also put in the blockchain. So in that sense, after even after transactions, Alice and Bob, they can verify that whether my transactions was correct or not. And that kind of transparency is there in the case of blockchain. So that means that one, either the with the sender or receiver, always can or anybody can verify 
the uh, accuracy of the transmissions whether it was correctly done or not. So that kind of task will see in case of reports. So as a result, we are to tell you that uh, there are three main pillars of this in the blockchain. We we'll talk about that. The first pillar is known as the decentralization. Second pillar is known as the transparency. And third pillar is known as the immutability. So these are the three main pillars of the blockchain technologies. That is the uh, decentralization, transparency as well as immutability. Now let us look at so how that uh, uh, immutability property is achieved in case of the blockchain. So we talk about crypto hash functions. So thanks to crypto hash functions for providing this uh, property known as the immutability property. So in that case, for example, if we take the first that here uh, example here. So in this case, we are using uh, SAR 256 as our algorithms. So SAR 256 as our algorithms means that 256 as output is there. So 256 uh, divided by 4, if we do it, that will be all the hexadecimal at 0. Okay. 4 bits, 4 bits, if we take it, it will be all the hexadecimal at 0. So for example, if you take the high as the import, your SAR 256 will produce the hash output as the hexadecimal. Say for example, welcome to log read, say we are glad to have you, so your hash output is something. Now, second example is very interesting. We are telling that suppose there is a transactions in the block. So this is a case. So T is upper case is T is upper case. That's how it is this. But if that person tries to say change this message, for example, upper case to lower case, we will tell that the hash output is completely distinct and random and different. Okay. So because that has out has function is very very sensitive to small part of basis in input. Even you change only single input bit or say a small number of bits in the input that will produce completely random and distinct as well. That is the beautiful property of a crypto hash function. So as a result, so if adversary tries to modify some message or content in the block. That will be verified quickly due to the hash put in the block. Okay. So this property is really achieved by the something like the cryptographic hash functions instead of blockchain property. So now question is that so uh, we are having blocks and blocks uh, needs to be uh, put in the blockchain. And blockchain, once you talk about the blockchain, that blockchain is maintained by a special kind of network uh, which is known as the peer-to-peer -peer networks, known as the P2P -P networks. For example, say we can have say a uh, group of say servers known as the cloud servers. Say cloud servers say form something known as the P2P uh, network. And one of the property of the P2P network is that if there are any number of nodes are there in P2P networks, a node can directly communicate to any other nodes in the network. So that means that for this node, it can communicate with the remaining n minus one node. As a result, the total number of links in the network will be n c two in n minus one bits because it will be a complete graph. So in that sense, in the blockchain, what we want that that every node in the network needs to be equally distributed with the nodes and that's why that every node is called as the equally privileged node or peer nodes. Okay. That means that each node in the network they shares the equal privileged meaning that they shares the equal node of the systems okay. and every node is treated with the equal priority. Okay. So as a result in case of the blockchain because it is a decentralized nature there are no questions of any one central server system, so there are many distributed server servers which will be connected to each other. Now, based on the applications, 
Uh, we can classify a blockchain uh, to be either public blockchain, private blockchain, or consortium or hybrid blockchain. Now, in case of the public blockchains, what will happen that anyone has the right to access, join, change, receive, or verify the transactions of the block and adding a block in the blockchain or in a P2P networks is cured by a special kind of algorithm known as a consensus or agreement protocol. So just like you said to uh, pass a bill in the Lok Sabha, you require consensus about the more than 50% vote. Just like that, based on the consensus algorithms, if majority of the uh, nodes they agree that okay this block is valid and needs to be added in the blockchain, then the block will be added in the blockchain also. So that is known as the consensus or agreement protocol. Okay. So one of the that widely that permission less it is follows the permission less because it is public, it does not require any permission, anybody can do it so. So it for example it is known as a Bitcoin or cryptocurrency. So therefore they need, at least can directly send the money to power without involving the now there are certain applications where we need to have a private blockchain. For example, one of the prime examples is that healthcare applications. In healthcare applications, your every hospital treats their 